Good morning, God's people. Good morning, God's people. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. What an awesome fall day the Lord has given us that we might come together and lift up the name of Jesus. So for all those who are here presently, for all those who are viewing us online, we welcome you to the Tabernacle of Praise Christian Church, our worship services. I'm Pastor Nate, and we're so glad to have all of you with us on today. We're looking forward to a glorious time in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask, we're going to follow this format uh, at this time. Minister Shirley Brown is going to come with words of exhortation and, and our prayer. She'll be followed immediately by Minister Kendra Coleman, who will come and give us a sermonic selection. Then I'll be back with the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give God praise as Minister Shirley comes. Good morning, saints. Good morning. For this is a day that the Lord has made. Yeah, yeah. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, yeah. Amen. We know that God can do it. So I give you greetings this morning, far and near. Uh, thanking God for each and every one who came out, those who are calling in, those who are watching. Amen. So we thank you, Lord, on this morning for each and every one for allowing us this opportunity. This morning, my words of exhortation will come from the book of Ruth. I've been studying this book uh, for a while, and this morning the Lord put it back in my spirit this morning. And oftentimes when we think about the book of Ruth, we think about Ruth and Boaz. Yes. But with this book of Ruth that God has been giving me and showing me, it's a fresh word. The thing with this is knowing that we need to continue to trust God, yes. trust him. And that's what Ruth did. In spite of everything that was going on in her life, as we go back, we look at her and her mother-in-law, Naomi, and we look, they lost husbands, sons. So at that point, with losing husbands, sons, she and her sister, she and her sister-in-law, Ruth, I'm sorry, Ruth decided to go on back to Bethlehem. But Oprah, the other daughter-in-law, decided she was going to go back to her family. But Ruth decided to go on with Naomi. Can you imagine that? You know, you have an opportunity to go back to your family, but you're choosing to follow a mother-in-law to a land of unknown that you don't know. So with that being said, it, it, the Lord said in my spirit that he's speaking to her. He's leading her. He's guiding her. And knowing that he is covering her and he is with us, just like he is now with the unknowns. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. So because of that, we yet thank God for what he's doing. So when we continue to go on, unless God gives you some new directions, I've learned to trust him and continue the journey of where he's allowing me to go at this time. Oftentimes when we don't hear from God, we, we make up our mind. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But I've learned when I don't hear from him, just to stay the course. Stay the course that God has ordered you on. So Ruth decided to go on with the mother-in-law, not knowing. But when she continued to go on, God favored her. She fell into the favor of God because of her faithfulness. Just like we are, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And that's what he did from the time she hit that town. She fell into a field where he'd seen her, and they started blessing. She went on and on and on each and every day, never lacking for nothing. Yeah. The words, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed, yeah. beg, and bread. And that's what he did with Ruth. So on and on and on in the story, in the words, you'll see where God covered her, how he kept her, just like he is now with us, with wars and rumors of wars and pandemics and everything going on. I choose to continue the path, the destiny. Your destiny is tied to this path that we need to continue on. All right. Even with everything going on, God is yet blessing us. Blessing. He's blessed my household yes, over and over again, yes, my children. Yes, things are happening. But until he says something different, we need to continue on the journey and the steps that have been ordered by the Lord. And right now, he hasn't said anything different but to continue on. Go with God. Go with God. He's a God that fell us not. So we're going to go on with him in spite of. 
in spite of. We're going to trust God and trust the journey, thanking and praising him each and every day. Because I've seen him blessed. You know, it's a lot going on, but I've watched people and I've seen things happen where the Lord has blessed beyond measure. Yes. For eyes have not seen, neither has entered into the heart of man what the Lord has prepared for those that love him. So we're going to trust God, y'all, and go on just like Ruth did. Yeah, in the end, she ended up marrying Boaz. But during the process, God showed himself mighty. Just like he's doing us now. He's showing himself mighty. He is doing it each and every day. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. So for me, those are the steps for us to continue on the journey. Trusting him when we can't trace him. Thanking and praising him each and every step of the way. Knowing that he's victorious. Because he's victorious, we will be victorious. So I thank him on today. And I yet praise him. I glorify his name. Because he is so worthy to be praised. I honor him. Magnifying him. What a mighty God he is. And, ha and he has continued to be. He blessed them in an unknown land. So he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. So he'll keep us. Just like he did Ruth. Because we've learned God has no respect of a person. So we thank him and go on with God, trusting him. For the Lord is our shepherd, and we have no need to want. Amen? Amen. Amen. As we prepare to go to the throne of grace, thanking and praising him. Almighty God. Almighty God. Almighty God. As we come into your presence this morning, Father, we come simply to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, you've been mighty, mighty good to us, Father God. So we give you all the honor, praise, and glory, Lord. Father, we've set this time aside just no more than just to glorify your name, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we acknowledge that it was you that done it and not we ourselves. So because of that, you deserve it. The honor, praise, and glory. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you, Father God. We magnify your name, Lord Jesus. We know that a good man or woman's steps have been ordered by the Lord, and we know you've ordered our steps, Father God, and we thank you. Father God, we come asking for forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. We ask for forgiveness, Father God. But Father God, we know we've fallen short of your glory, but we thank you for your grace, in your mercy that you allow each and every day that is fresh each and every morning so we thank you Lord for being such a forgiving God thank you Lord Jesus for we know when the praises go up the blessings come down so we thank you on this morning father for answering prayers but father we thank you for for not answering some prayers father that we prayed for Father God, you know what's best for us. You know because you made us, Father God. You made us, Father God, and we thank you for that, Father God, for all you've done, Father God. Lord Jesus, we come praying, Father God, one for another, Lord, on this morning, Father God. Father God, we come praying for our congregation, Father God. Father God, we pray for those who are in bereavement, Lord Jesus. Father God, that you would touch. See, Father, I know you to be a comforter as well. You have everything that we need. All we need to do is simply just ask. Just ask the Father. Just ask. Your word said we have not because we ask not. So we're asking today, Father God, that you have your way, Father God. Thank you for keeping us, Father God, each and every day, Father God. Father God, you allowed us, Father God, to call in, to dial in, to show up, Father God. Lord, you've given us a reasonable portion of our health and strength, and we thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you. We choose to focus on you, Lord Jesus. Focus on you, Father God, each and every day, and follow your footstep, your lead, for you're truly our shepherd, Father, and we're following you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Have your way. Father God, we pray for all those who are sick, Father God, in the physical body. We ask that you touch right now in the name of Jesus. 
We know you to be a healer, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you for delivering, Father, those who need a deliverance, Father, in the name of Jesus. We know you can do anything except fail. So because of that, we thank you, Lord, in advance. We prayed, Lord, and now we're thanking you, Father, for what you're doing and what you've continued to do, Father. Father God, I lift up our country and that you would touch us, Father, that you would touch this country. Every person, Father God, we know you're in charge, Father God. So we yes, trust, yet trust you, Father. I pray for our city, all the leaders, Father God. Father God, I pray for our local churches that are open, Father, in your name, Father. Lord, I lift up our pastor and first lady, Father God, our own personal congregation, Father God, that you would touch each and every one, Father God. And Father God, our members, Father God, that are extended members, Father, that you would touch them, Lord Jesus. Father God, you've been so good, Lord. You've just been so good, Lord Jesus. There's so much to thank you for, Father God. So we thank you for it all. Thank you for it all, Father God, for all that you've done, Lord Jesus. Father God, as we continue to come to you with prayer and supplication, Father, knowing that we can't do it, but you can, Lord, so we honor you, we praise you, we glorify you, Father, for you've been a mighty, mighty good God. Lord, it could have been so many ways, but just like Ruth, Lord, you made provisions for us, Father God, and you won't stop until that work is completed. So we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, Father, each and every day. Father, I pray that you will bring us back together again on one accord, Father God. Your people, Father God, back together on one accord, Father God. Lord, we give you honor, praise, and glory, Father, as we just stand in awe of you, Father, in awe of who you are, Father, how you've shielded us from danger seen and unseen, some imagining, some even real. Father, your word said it may come near us, but they will not harm us. So I thank you, Lord. I choose to go on with you, Father God, and to the destiny that you have for us, Father God. We know that all good things come from the Lord. So we thank you, Father, for that, Father God, knowing that good things are to come and good things are here. It may not be like we wanted them to be, Father God, but Father God, we know that you're with us, Father God, in the midst of this. So we ask that you continue to have your way in our life each and every day, Father God. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We honor you, Lord. I thank you, Father God. I thank you. I just glorify in you, Father. I rejoice, 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 Father God, in you, Lord Jesus, simply in you, Father God, because you loved us, Father God, to look beyond our faults and to see our needs. So we get thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God you are. Thank you for your presence that is with us each and every day. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For we know it is the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for doing just what you do each and every day. Mm, thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah and amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. God Do you 
believe that today? Whoa! God can. God can. I know that He will. God can. He'll fix it. Yes, He will. He'll fix it for you. Listen. Somebody might be in the hospital, and the doctors don't know all they can do. Seed. I'm a witness, he'll bring you through. Just like God gave Moses power in the rock. I'm here to tell you there's healing in the word of God, and God can. I know that he To show you that God can. Come here, woman, with the issue of love. And she'll tell you that God can. Come on over here, blind man on the side of the road. And tell them God can. Come on over here, Abraham. We know God gave you a Come on, praise him, praise him. Hallelujah. Come on, if you know God is a working it out God. Has he fixed anything for anybody here? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that, that song resonates with me. Not only can he, he will do it. I think this is a good place to say, won't he do it? <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, we praise God. We praise God again for the privilege to be in this place among God's people. 
Let's go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the name of Jesus, in the awesome and matchless name of Jesus, we thank you now for this privilege that we can go down into your word. I ask now, O oh God, that your anointing will continue to move in this place. Take me out of self and hide me behind your cross. Oh God, we need to hear from you. We need a word from you, so speak to me and through me. That the Logos word that I speak will become a rhema word for every person that is listening, every person that is watching. So they, they will receive exactly what it is, that rhema word you want them to receive on this day. Oh God, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer, my everything, my all in all, and all who believe in the power of prayer, shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, we praise God for the privilege to stand behind this sacred desk and lift up the name of Jesus. We must always begin anything we do by recognizing God and giving him his props. Yes. Amen. Because he is the one in whom we live, we move, and we have our being. Recognizing all members of clergy who are here, to our deacons, our, our church officers, to first lady, all of God's people who are here and all of God's people who are watching and listening. Amen. We greet you in the awesome and matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, each week as I pray and meditate and seek God's guidance regarding the content of the message, I, I always ask for a relevant word that will meet you right where you are and provide just what you need when you need it. This is why most of the sermons that I deliver are sprinkled with not just biblical passages, but I include some spiritual principles as well as some practical and pragmatic principles uh, because I, I, my desire is to provide you with a word that you can use everywhere. Yeah. Amen. Not just here at the church. Come on now. Uh, uh, you can use it on your job and you can use it in, in your relationship. You can use it in the community. You can use it everywhere you go in every arena of life. So I pray that you listen to each message with the spirit of discernment so you can receive what God has for you through his word. Our foundational text is from a very familiar passage, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. I'm only going to read one verse. Once I start reading it, you'll say, oh, I know that one already. Hallelujah. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a sound mind. Everybody say power, love, sound mind. The message today is entitled, Dealing with fear. Hmm. Dealing with fear. Listen to the following scenarios. While rerouting, your navigation system has routed you through the wrong side of town. And when you realize where you are, your heart starts to race. Why? Another scenario, the company where you work announces they'll soon be doing a restructuring of your department and it could impact you. Now the announcement is all that you can think about. Why? You're driving the speed limit, but a policeman pulls up behind you and you immediately start to get nervous. You slow down. Why? You had your annual physical a couple of weeks ago but the doctor's office calls and asks you to schedule a follow-up visit. Immediately, you begin to think something is wrong. Why? You know, each response to these situations I just shared with you is most often driven by fear. Our immediate response to situations such as these are often powered by thoughts of worst-case scenarios leading to our thinking that the worst thing that could happen will happen. Our thoughts are rarely driven by a sense of peace and, and goodwill because we have been conditioned by the world to prepare for the worst while just hoping for the best. There are many images that people fear. Some are fear stormy weather, certain kind of animals, other people, and even their surroundings. However, fear can be positive in a sense that it can trigger actions that could be life-saving responses to a certain situation. But you know, the fear can also be a crippling kind of fear that immobilizes us. 
dealing with this crippling kind of fear is what we're going to deal with today. You know, fear and discouragement are two elements that the, de that's, that the devil in the devil's arsenal that he uses against us quite a bit. Together, they are a powerful duo that minimizes our consistent adherence to the movement of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So this morning, we're going to examine how to deal with this fear so it can stop hindering us from reaching our God-ordained potential in life in both the spiritual and our personal lives. Is that all right? Here are two definitions I want us to share with you as it relates to fear. One pertains to thoughts, while the other pertains to feelings. Here's the first definition. Fear, as it relates to thoughts, is defined as an idea, concept, or other entity that causes feelings of distress. Let me repeat that again. Fear, as it relates to thoughts, is defined as an idea, a concept, or other entity that causes feelings of distress. Now notice that the thought causes the feelings. Here's the second definition. Fear, as it relates to feelings, is defined as an unpleasant sensation of, of anxiety or apprehension caused by the presence or anticipation of danger. Fear, as it relates to feelings, is defined as an unpleasant sensation of anxiety or apprehension caused by the presence or anticipation of danger. Again, the feeling is caused by the thought. Do you see the connection between thoughts and feelings? When we examine these two definitions together, we see that the fear generated by our thoughts creates the fear that we can actually feel. First, there is a thought which is followed by a feeling. Here's a nugget for you. If you are not fearful in your thinking, then you won't become fearful in your emotions. Ooh, let that marinate for a minute. If you're not fearful in your thinking, then you will not become fearful in your emotions. You know, there's a clause, uh, Minister Smith, right in the middle of Psalms 23 and 4 that says, I will fear no evil. But check this out. The frontier of the mind is the place where the devil wages his greatest attacks because he understands that if he can manipulate our minds, which is the control center of our decision making, the rest of our body is soon going to follow. Listen, it is, listen, the fear of evil that messes us up. For most of us, the evil doesn't possess nearly the power that the fear of evil delivers. Listen to me again. In, in the, it is the fear of evil that keeps you up at night. It is the fear of evil that robs you of your appetite. It is the fear of evil that has you going to the medicine cabinet looking for a Valium. It is the fear of evil that makes you reach for that drink to try and calm yourself down. It is the fear of evil. But if you fear evil, hear me now good, God's people, it's your own fault. It's your own fault because the God we serve, come on now, he, look, he has overcome evil and he has given us as believers the victory over evil so we have nothing to fear. <laughs> Our foundational text reminds us God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Feelings of fear are generated by how we think. So in order for us to address the crippling feelings of fear that we sometimes experience, we must first address, BJ, how we think. Hmm. Let's look at one of the examples I, I opened with uh, uh, at first. In the first example, you've driven to the wrong side of town, and now you realize where you are, and your heart starts racing. Why does your heart start racing? It starts racing because your mind, it takes on a Picasso demeanor and begins to paint negative images of things that could happen on the canvas of your imagination. Mm, mm, mm. Did y'all get that? The mind begins to create negative images and, and circumstances where there are actually none present. Mm, mm. 
your mind doesn't consider the fact that in actuality, nobody is attempting to even bother you. And you're not in jeopardy in any kind of way. Your mind immediately goes to all of the negative things you've heard on the news about this area that you mistakenly find yourself in. It goes to all the crime statistic about the robberies and, and the murders and all the other acts of violence that have happened here. It remembers all the news articles that you read about multiple carjackings in that area. It remembers stories that your friend has told you about this area. After your mind tells you about everything that it has on its file about the neighborhood, then it inserts you into the storyline. What, what are you talking about, Pastor? And now it suggests that you could be robbed. It suggests that you could be carjacked. It, it suggests that you could be murdered. And once you start to think that it could happen to you, then and only then, your heart starts to race. Do you see how your mind is the control center? And it gets you to thinking about all these situations, Minister Shirley, that do not exist. Mm. This is why we got to learn to deal with fear. We got to learn to deal with fear because fear is a learned emotion. Because there was a time in, in most of our lives when we had little or no fear. Remember that feeling when we jumped off the jungle gym and slammed our little bodies to the ground? Amen. For me, it was jumping from a tree because jungle gyms were still futuristic. <laughs> Come on, Frank, you know what I'm talking about. We, we ain't had no jungle gym. We, we were jumping off a tree, amen. Amen. Perhaps it was a feeling of invincibility that surfaced when we went on our first roller coaster ride or when we were in high school or college or maybe our first stint in the military. We felt that, like it was nothing we could do. No goal was unattainable. Then as time went by, the world tells us more frequently what we can't do rather than what we can do. All of the doubters and all the naysayers, a.k.a. haters, they start to laugh at our goals and try to persuade us from going after our dreams. They say, man, you're crazy to try that. It's too hard to even try. You ought to play it safe. Why don't you try this instead? They act as if dreams are meant for others and not for us. So they surround us, listen to me, with all of this negative energy and try to instill their own fears and insecurities into us. I hope y'all are listening today. Then ever so slowly, we not only begin to know the word fear, we start to understand what it's like to be fearful. With so many people as telling us what we can't do and so many people telling us what we can it's difficult sometimes not to allow fear to creep into our lives. And unfortunately, this is how a lot of people go through life. Then as we advance in age, many of us become so fearful of losing what we have that we don't go after what we truly want. Mm. We want to play it safe. And we want to hold on so tight to the status quo that we never experience what could be and what God has already prepared for us. We start to believe all the doubters and we don't take chances that'll move us one step closer to our dream. This is what I call, we, we start playing to lose. We see this in sports all the time. A team has a lead and they've been going after it and th then they start to think about how not to lose, come on now, instead of continuing to move forward and keep on charging. You, you football fans know about the prevent defense, which I hate. That has been the demise of many a team because they start playing not to lose. Come on, Casey, you know what I'm talking about. But instead of playing to win, you can see it in their energy. You can see it in their body language. And as a result, the other team start playing loose. Come on, momentum change size, and they eventually win the game. Listen, to live a life filled with consistent positive energy we must learn to repel the energy of fear. Whether it comes from within or whether it comes from another person, we must learn to deal with fear so we can overcome it. Amen, amen. amen. And then we gotta adopt a play to win mindset. See, playing to win requires a commitment to yourself that listen, even if you fail, you learn from that failed attempt and then keep on trying. 
Amen. This will help you develop a never give up attitude that, so that you refuse to let your goals and your dreams die. Those who play to win know that success is not given to us. Someone, somebody need to hear that. It is pursued with all of the energy that we can muster. Listen to this nugget. Obstacles and struggles are a part of life and only serve to make us appreciate our success even more. If everything came easy, we wouldn't truly know how it feels to succeed, nor would we appreciate it the, the same. Here's another nugget. For the believer, all the believers said, that's for me. Look, obstacles are meant to be overcome, fear is meant to be conquered, and success is meant to be achieved. These are all part of the game of life, and people who succeed play to win and never give up until the goal is obtained. But you know, unfortunately, Randy, many people are feeling strangled by fear, strangled by hatred right about now. We need the Holy Spirit to breathe on us so we can feel that empowerment from his presence that's already in us. Not being able to breathe. That has to be without question. One of the most agonizing and traumatizing things I could ever imagine a human being experiencing. We can imagine how Eric Garner and George Floyd felt in the final moments of their lives while, while they were strangled and suffocated by rogue police officers who ignored their desperate plea for air. Six years separate their murders and now I can't breathe has become the words that have sparked another nationwide rallying cry to demand more police accountability in the deaths of unarmed black men and women. Just as it was six years ago, the days following George Floyd's murder has been extremely tumultuous in cities across America. We have watched what were once peaceful neighborhoods become battlegrounds resembling a war zone. Our airways and newspapers have been saturated with sad stories and appalling accounts of violence and destruction of people just wilding out in an effort to have their cries heard. While many people are trying to do the right thing by peaceful protests, there are some who are doing it the wrong way. Burning cars and smashing storefront windows and, and looting businesses. And listen, then you have many police who are trying to uphold peace and restore peace in the right way, while others seem to be happy to take advantage of this to demean, abuse, and kill people of color. Unfortunately, most of what you see on the airwaves are the negative aspects of the protests and all of the negative police uh, uh, activity, and none of the very few positive images are ever aired. One month before Floyd's death, COVID-19 was on the news everybody was talking about. But while the corona pandemic now seemed to have been bumped to a second tier status, and now we have all of this political shenanigans in the news. So I, as I mentioned earlier, I, I'm constantly petitioning the Holy Spirit to speak to me, to give me a word of encouragement that will help us out during this unsettling out. We need a word from the Lord. We need a word because it seems that fear and, and anger and, and hatred has this country in a stranglehold. We need divine help like never before. Well, like he always does, the Holy Spirit has spoken. And he's given me a word for you today in this message about how to deal with this fear, dealing with fear. You know, injecting fear into people's lives is a tactic the devil has been using for years. He didn't just start using it in this 21st century. Listen to this account from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 22. Then the same, excuse me, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them again, 
peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive the Holy Ghost. In this passage, we see the disciples of Jesus uh, assembled and, and huddled together behind closed doors, listen, for fear of certain Jews and Roman authorities. See, the Pharisees and Sadducees had decided to team up with Rome to get rid of Jesus. Keep in mind that the Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't particularly care for one another. But both groups hated Jesus. So they decided to team up. You need to notice, in case you didn't know, you're going across people who obviously don't like each other, but they'll team up to go against you. I, I, I think I just helped somebody. <laughs> the disciples feared for their lives because they wondered if the Roman authorities were going to come after them just like they came after Jesus. They couldn't hardly breathe because of fear. But it was that paralyzing and, and crippling, fearful mental state that Jesus showed up. The record said, as they, as they, while they were assembled together, while the doors were closed and locked, Jesus appeared with words of comfort. You know what, Deacon Hill, I wonder if there's anyone listening or watching who can testify. When crazy stuff jumps off in your life, come on now, when you find yourself in a position where crippling fear is trying to overtake your life, when you're locked up tightly because you don't want to have anybody else around, when it seems like you're up the creek without a paddle, come on now, that's when Jesus will show up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Aren't you glad that he's an on-time God? Oh, yeah, he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And in this 20th chapter of John, Jesus does just that. He shows up. He appears to the disciples after he had risen from the dead. And I can imagine the disciples were happy. But at the same time, um, uh, uh, Minister Hill, I believe that they were a little bit unsettled. Because, you know, dead people don't just show up like that. Come on now. They don't just show up like that. Evidently, they forgot what Jesus said in John 20 and 19. Destroy this temple, and in three days, I'll raise it up. They thought Jesus was talking about the church building. They thought he was talking about the synagogue, but he was speaking prophetically about his death and resurrection. On that day, somebody said that day, the Lord gave each of them free breathing treatments. The treatment was contained in one word. Peace. John informs us that when Jesus miraculously appeared in their midst, he said to them from John 20 and 21, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Ghost. Listen to me, top partners and friends. You need to know that Jesus is a peace provider and he's a peace producer. It was this proclamation of peace that calmed down this room of despondent disciples. You see, their leader, their teacher, their mentor, their friend had just died a cruel and ignominious death on the old rugged cross. So they needed peace in the worst way. And because emotionally they couldn't breathe, so to speak, due to sadness and fear. But you know what? This wasn't the first time that the great peace giver had given peace. I'm reminded of a time when Jesus was asleep on the back of the boat and a storm arose tossing the boat to and fro. The Bible says the waves beat upon the ship heaving buckets of water onto the boat. Even though Jesus was on the boat, the disciples still got scared. They became so fearful that they thought they were going to die. But they ran to Jesus and wakened him and said, Jesus. And he got up and all he had to say was, peace, be still. And the Bible says, the wind and the wave just hushed. <laughs> they stopped immediately. Now, I don't know how you feel about it, but if Jesus can calm the raging sea, surely, somebody say surely, surely he can calm the fears of you and me. Listen, if you're going through trials and tribulation in your life, I want to let you know that Jesus is still available to say, peace. Be still. 
if you're troubled and you're burdened down and you can't see a way out, Jesus is still available to say, peace, be still. If your back is up against the wall and you're ready to throw in the towel, Jesus is still available hmm, to say, peace, be still. Just wake Jesus up and say, ask him to say, peace, be still. Well, here we are in this 21st century, and we need some breathing treatments again. Because once again, three, fear is threatening to choke the life from us. But I thank God that over 2,000 years later, Jesus is still available and he's willing to breathe on us. Yes, when we can't breathe, Jesus will breathe on us. And when he does, he does these four things for us. And if you don't mind, I'm going to tell you about these four things and I'm going to let you get out of here. When Jesus breathes on you, number one, he feels you. Right now, we need the spirit of the living God to fill us. So many people, as I said, seem to be filled with fear and anger and hate right now. So we need Jesus to breathe, breathe peace on us. Ephesians 3 and 19 says, To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all of the fullness of God. Here's the second thing. He gives you renewed life. We need to be revived. We need to be made alive again. We need to be reminded that we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. We need a revival in every city in America right about now. So much is going on in the world. Coronavirus, social and economic injustice, chaos in the street, calamities called by storm, and confusion seemingly at every turn. We need God to give us new life. Here's the third thing. He empowers you. We need spiritual empowerment to combat the devil's attack. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. If there ever was a time that Satan's roaring can be heard, it's in our present day. Everywhere you turn, no matter what you read, no matter what you watch, no matter what you listen to, Satan's roaring is loud and it's intimidating to the human heart. Even God's people who know the voice of God can be often found cowering in fear at the threatening roar of Satan. But I got news, good news for y'all saints. There's more than one lion roaring. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so I need to ask, are you listening to the roaring of Satan? Or are you listening to the roaring of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. My Bible tells me that in John 10 and 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they know me. So we need to listen for the sound, for the roar of the voice of God. And number four, he sends you. He sends you. Listen to me, top partners and friends. The Lord has work. For us to do. So he's looking for someone. With a can do spirit. With an I will spirit. He's looking for someone with a Isaiah 6 spirit. See the Lord had a job for someone to do. So he asked in Isaiah 6 and 8. Whom shall I send? And whom will go for us? I want you to know that the Lord has chosen and empowered men and women just like you and just like me to get busy in his service. All we need is a willingness to accept the call because there's a lot of work for everybody to do. Isaiah responded to the Lord's call by saying in Isaiah 6 and 8b, Hear my Lord, send me, I'll go. Isaiah was willing to work for the Lord. And this is the same attitude 
that we all must develop a willingness to work for God in kingdom building. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't share this good news. There's always a reward for your willingness to work for God. Because when you help God with his house, glory to God, <laughs> he'll help you with your house. And I believe this time in history is the greatest challenge for the people of God that we've ever faced regarding being active in the Lord's work. We need people who are willing to get involved in serving God and doing his work. However, just as it is with any job, there are some requirements to do the work of the Lord. There are some, there are some uh, requirements, some demands that must be met. There must be conviction. We must be convicted about the cause and then be moved into action. But not only is, should there be conviction, there must also be commitment. But it's hard to do these things when you can't breathe because of fear. So, but I'm glad that when that happens, the Holy Spirit breathes on us. I submit to you that during this time when our normal routines have been significantly altered, we need to be on lockdown with Jesus and make this time count. We need to get in our upper room or our lower room or whatever room we have and call on the Lord for guidance regarding our assignment. Listen to me, God's people. Heading down the home stretch, you know. I support the police who try to maintain peace lawfully. But I abhor those who violate the mandate to protect and serve and operate in a rogue manner. Likewise, I'm all in for peaceful protests, for marching and, and showing solidarity and unity. But I'm not down with rioting, looting, and destroying property. We need to pray and seek God's presence. The mandate is clear. Second Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So if we get to a point where we're finding it hard to breathe because the cares of life seem to be taking our breath away, I'm happy to report that the Holy Spirit is still available to breathe on us and provide us with spiritual resuscitation. But listen, after the Lord breathes on us, listen to me, he wants us to evangelize and not vandalize. Come on now, come on now. He, he wants us to pray while we protest. He wants us to preach through our pain. And when we do, I'm a living witness that he will provide a peace that surpasses all understanding. Hallelujah. But we got to learn to deal with fear if we are to be successful in this spiritual warfare. Listen, today God offers each, each of us his choice. We can live by fear or we can live by faith. If we choose fear, then we're going to live our entire lives, never experience it, the joy of living and serving God and all of the benefits that come from service. But if we choose to walk in faith, we will experience that peace that surpasses all understanding that I just talked about, in addition to a newfound freedom that will lead to the blessed assurance that we are living life to the fullest. This is all made possible by learning to deal with fear. Remember our foundational text. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. To dispel fear, we must depend on this power. We must depend on this love. We must depend on this sound mind because it's given to every believer as a part of the salvation package. And the good news, I've been authorized to distribute salvation packages for those who don't have them today. Hallelujah. Come on. If you receive this word, give God praise. Hallelujah. As the invitation to discipleship is now extended, 
if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you're already a Christian and you want to become a local, remote, or honorary member of the Tabernacle Praise Christian Church, send your contact information and or any question you might have about our ministry to labhill60 at gmail.com. Again, that's labhill60 at gmail.com. Or you can text it to 901 319 5588. 901-319-5588. Once again, I'd like to personally thank all of our top partners and friends for their continued financial support of this ministry. So for first-time viewers who might also desire to support this ministry financially, we have four methods by which you can give. The first one is a cash app. Our ID is dollar sign T-O-P-C-C 4325. Again, that's dollar sign T-O-P-C-C Four three two five. The second option, you can text TOP to 77977 and then follow the prompts. Our third method, we invite everyone to download our TOP app from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, and then you can click on the giving icon and follow the prompts. The fourth method is by the good old U.S. mail. You can mail them to TOPCC 4325 Hacks Cross Road, Memphis, Tennessee 38125. Again, we thank all of you for being with us on today, and it is my prayer that through the ministry of song, the ministry of the spoken word, that we all have received something to strengthen us in our spiritual walk. So at this time, our benediction comes in the form of a passage from 2 Corinthians 13 and 14 from the Message Bible. May the amazing grace of the Master, Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, the intimate fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you until we meet again. Everyone say amen. 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 Until next week, this is Pastor Nate saying, be safe and be blessed. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.